Hello everyone, and welcome back to my complete run-through of Kerbal Space Program 0.23, and I am back from vacation. I was actually in Toronto from the 20th to the 30th of December, and uh, the videos that have been released during that time were on a scheduled release. So I'm coming back to Kerbal Space Program for the first time in a week and a half and I need to try and remember what I was doing. I remembered I had left Merman Kerman on the moon and I have been doing quite a lot of thinking about that. This is the current state of our tech tree and I had originally purchased some of the more uh, some of the heavier rocketry components in order to save Merman Kerman but I neglected one simple fact and that's that the rule for this series is that none of the missions are probe controlled and that means that I need to have Kerbals inside the pods going to the uh, rescue Merman Kerman. But I only have this pod, uh, which only carries one crew member. Now, I could put two, two such pods on the ship, but that's not uh, in keeping with my elegant design philosophy. And so what I really should have gotten was uh, one of these containers, one of these lander cans. And so I would have put this whoop, whoop, this part on top and then one of the lander cans underneath it and that would have been able to rescue Merman Kerman. Or I could have used, of course, this command pod e either way. Or, uh, I mean, this command pod is a little bit heavier though, so probably not. Anyway, but uh, so a little bit of lack of foresight there. Um, but I also did some thinking and realized that I had vastly underestimated the mass of the um, of the reaction wheels on the lander that Merman Kerman is in. When I was trying to figure out whether he had enough Delta V to leave the moon and return safely to Kerbin, I was not estimating the mass of the reaction wheels correctly, and those reaction wheels are going to be de decoupled from the vehicle as soon as we lift off from the moon. So there is a chance that we can rescue him on uh, without any new vehicle so let's just turn to the moon and see what I can do there okay I have to confess that I'm a bit under the weather right now and so my my idea might be just a product of a crazy delusion born out of some medication um, of course you would be under the weather too if you uh, went from California to Toronto for Christmas but uh, here we are. So you see, this has an excessive number of reaction wheels. It has four of them. And those reaction wheels are actually quite heavy. So I'm hoping that they are heavy enough that it'll make a significant difference. My calculation is that uh, actually the center pod here, even given the fact that it's not full of fuel, it, it is... Uh... Oh, wait... Oh, I, I detect that I might have just uh, had a great disaster. Uh, wait a minute. Why? Come on. Okay, no. That's weird. Anyway, um, I was just looking at something wrong. Alright, so, anyway. Uh, I'm not too well here. Alright, so, yeah. Let's just try it out. I think the center pod has about 1,400 Delta V, actually which is much more than enough to get back to Kerbin. Assuming I haven't made any of my calculations wrong. Well, I'm impatient. Merman Kerman needs to get back home now. He's looking happy and I'm not uh, I'm not gonna waste any time here. Let's yep, let's get into orbit. Okay, we need to make this very very quick. Hmm. Would it be better to launch back? I don't know. No, I'm just gonna do it normal style. Um. Yep. Well, here goes nothing. Okay. Right. Off we go.
Okay, Merman. You gotta be in big trouble if you don't get... Well, I guess we could mount some sort of rescue mission once we get more uh, science. It's not like he's got a run of oxygen. I'm not using any mods in this series. So, it should be fine. Let's let's start uh, being a little bit more precise about things here. Whoa, that's not precise. Uh... Let's keep it tight to the moon so that uh, we get some benefit from <laughs> what little Oberth effect there is around the moon when we try and burn for Kerbin. I think my calculations look to have been correct. We, we do have enough fuel after all. Yeah, those reaction wheels are crazy. I must remember not to put four reaction wheels on my landers next time. That's just... that was just stupid. Alright. So, coasting up there. And then after that, uh, where our apoapsis is here is where we're going to burn for Kerbin. There's us in orbit. Very tight orbit. I think it should clear everything on the moon, so that's fine. Okay, Merman, looks like you're good to go for home. Let's plot that. Oh, and for those who are wondering, uh, when I, I, in the previous episode I talked about doing a direct burden for home. That would have been if I had launched directly from like here and gone right into this orbit here. So if you can imagine an arc going from around here up into this here and directly out, that would have been the most efficient way, a single burn back to Kerbin. Okay, uh, so anyway, let's definitely bring him home. I think 21 kilometers. There's no deadly, deadly re-entry in this series, so I'm not too worried about dipping in too low. I just want to make sure he gets back in. And 21 kilometers should definitely do it. Okay, time warp. There's Kerbin. Just a little bit more time and start burning. Okay, 19 kilometers is fine. Alright, so yeah. Well, there you go. Math, you know. Making sure you get it right can make a huge difference when it comes to whether you decide to bring a Ker Kerbal back or mount a rescue mission. If you care about saving Kerbal lives, of course. Oh, there's Kerbin. Okay. We're approaching on the dark side, but perhaps that'll mean that we'll land on the bright side. Let's start uh, just getting rid of the rest of the fuel here. Our, lower our orbit a bit, uh, not on the on, not on the periapsis side, on the apoapsis side.
that should do it. Oh, I think we're going to get a dawn. Let's see. Let's have uh, its point retrograde. Excellent. All right, Merman. Well, this is going to be a short episode, obviously, since we're just uh, bringing Merman Curran back. But that's probably safer than than trying to do a whole lot at once, since I haven't been uh, at this for a week and a half, and I'm not uh, in perfect condition. I doubt you want to hear me coughing away or anything. Right now, I've, I'm uh, I'm reasonably well controlled, but that has not been the case over the past few days. Okay, I think it's safe to drop the service module now. Our experiments are all happily... Oh no! I failed to do one of the mystery goo experiments. How did that happen? Alright, well, we're observing mystery goo, darn it. Uh, just uh, keep... To... Oh, it looks like we're gonna get at least 10 signs out of it. Alright. The goo seems to have clumped into a sphere. It also appears to have become brittle. I guess we haven't done this one before. Or maybe... I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, we'll keep that data. We have no choice now. Alright. Decouple. And we're go for re-entry. Let's orient a bit better. Okay, well, we're definitely coming down to the surface on, uh, well, not exactly the morning side, but I guess it could be worse. At least the sun is around. I mean, it is morning, but not as bright as I would like. Okay, we're under 500 meters per second, preparing parachute deployment, and we better get to it. SAS is off. Oh, there was a comment about uh, frame rates, so I will report that I am currently getting 5 frames per second while recording, despite the fact that there really isn't much going on with this vehicle, and it's really all Kerbin. Kerbin is just a frame rate thing. Actually, that's interesting. Well, when I point in this direction, I get 19 frames per second. Now, when I point here, 5 frames per second. Here, 30, 40, 30. Well, because I've limited my recording to 30. So it's really the, the solar effects, I guess. This effect on this horizon is what is making the frame rate go down when I point here. Let's see if I just tilt down barely. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 24 now. But here, 5. 5 frames per second. So I think we know what the frame rate hog is here. It's it's the sun. <laughs> it's, it's whatever scattering effect we have on the horizon here. This, this horizon effect is causing very low frame rates right around here. So, let me just uh, dip down like this and solve that problem. If there's an option that I can turn off that might solve that, the low frame rates around the horizon there, please mention it in the comments below, I'm sure. I don't know if it'll hurt the visual quality of the, of the program or not, but, but it'll be good to know anyway. All right, so uh, Merman Kerman, who needed a rescue? I mean, all that fuss about uh, rescuing Merman Kerman, and uh, he was able to come back all on his own without any fuss. 
plenty of fuel to spare so so yeah it, it turned out to be a very successful vehicle after all uh, just a little bit of miscalculation on my part and perhaps a bit of nervousness uh, late in the day before I had to go off on the trip it may have been a little bit panicky but yeah Marin Kerman looks delighted and he should be he conducted the mission with stunning success well except for one goo container which failed to be failed to be activated at the proper time but you know we won't hold that against him okay there we go all right Let's recover this vessel and see what kind of science we got from this moon trip. 332. Alright, surface sample from the moon's Midlands. EVA report from the same. Material study from the same. I see we are... Oh no, no, we've got the goo from the, from the moon's Midlands as well. We probably should have gotten a goo in orbit around the moon or something like that. But, uh, yeah. We got the 10 anyway. And recovery of a vessel returned from the surface of the moon gave us a nice 30 science for, for a grand total of 332. So, Mission Epsilon with Merman Kerman was actually a total success, uh, despite some hand-wringing on my part. And uh, a little bit of math showed that it could be done, and it was done. So, I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you want to continue following my adventures in stock 0.23, do consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.